So since I started this channel almost two years ago, I've been dying to show you guys Fear Farm. This is at Snyder's Farm in Air, Ontario, very close to Guelph, Ontario. This is one of my favorite spooky season events to attend. It's been probably since 2019 since I've been here because the pandemic, all the shutdowns, this and that. We cannot wait to show you guys some of the attractions here. Let's go and check them out. So admittedly, it's been a few years since I've been here, but they used to give you like a little ticket stub that would sort of tell you which ones you had been to, which ones you hadn't been to, and it made it easier to kind of keep track. They didn't do that this year, so I'm a bit worried about that because it'll be a little bit harder to sort of know which ones we've gone to, which ones we still need to do, etc. But we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So we just went on our first ride, which was the Haunted Hayride. We were in line for what felt like close to an hour, to be honest with you. So that's why I always recommend to come to these things earlier on in the season and come earlier in the day too. Like we, the park opens, I think here around like seven, I think we got here around eight and it's already packed. So I would definitely recommend getting here earlier. Um, we're actually gonna find how much fast passes are because it's really cold tonight. And I just don't think we can handle waiting in all those lines. They're really, really bad. Um, especially with my leg injury. We're gonna find out how much fast passes are. Stay tuned. Okay, so I can't remember exactly what our ticket prices were. I'm gonna double check. They were they were expensive, and um, these fast passes were like forty five dollars each on top of our ticket prices. Like that's expensive. Like it's shockingly expensive. It's, this is one of my favorites, as I, as I mentioned before. But these prices are a little astronomical. Um, I just feel like they're all being like that these days though. So anyway, we got the fast passes. I really am struggling with my leg, guys. Let's see what we can get through the rest of this. Okay, so <laughs> if you follow my channel, one of my first cardinal rules is check the weather before you go anywhere. Check the weather, not just where you are, check the weather where you're going because it could be a big difference. Like 10, 20 minutes away from you could be the difference of like 10, 20 degrees. So we all showed up at Fear Farm. These girls did not dress appropriately and had to buy merch. So these sweaters, these two sweaters cost them like 100, what, 125? Yeah, yes. Around 125 dollars. So <laughs> Cody that. bought a tube, which cost him, what is this tube, 25? Yeah. 25 dollar tube, like check the weather. Like, like I said, it, it's, it's, it could be a big difference of, you know, a few, a few kilometers. I'm not even kidding, a few kilometers, and especially in Canada, can make a huge difference. So always check where you're going, what the temperature's gonna be, and not check what temperature is now, what it's gonna be when you get there, and also later on in the night, because who knows how long you're gonna be there. So just plan ahead. These girls did not plan ahead. <laughs> they cost them big money and their self-respect, because who wants to wear that or that, right? So just check. Cardinal rule, rule number one. So I think we're about to do the hillbilly hike. We have our fast passes now. Hopefully we can get in there sooner because these lines are not a good time. Okay, a little hack. If you don't want them to scare you, don't act scared because if as soon as they find out that you're scared, they are going to target you. So just try and act cool and you should be okay. So that was like the funniest thing I've ever gone through. So one of the jump scares, <laughs> scared Nate, our friends, Nate and Melissa so bad that they literally both fell to the ground. Super nice about it, came over and like made sure they were okay, helped them up, but then <laughs> proceed to scare them again. <laughs> and then, oh my God, they're, they're so funny here because they literally ask you like, what are their names, what are their names? And you'll tell them the names and then they'll like use it against them. So anyway, super, super funny. Like I said, don't show you're scared or else they will target you. 
We are about to go to the stock stocking dead. We're going to stocking dead. This is like a corn maze one. You go through like a school bus. It's really cool. In the cornfield right now. This is like one of the creepier ones. So a couple mistakes were made. <laughs> This happens to me from time to time where, uh, you know, you get caught up, you're recording or you think you're recording, you're not. And then you stop recording and then you actually are recording. So there's been a few times tonight where that's what was happening. So, whoops, um, that one was really fun. It was another, you go through like a bus and then you're in like a corn maze. Again, if your friends are scared, tell them because they will, target them for sure which makes it like a lot more fun um anyway super super funny we are going to continue on we're going to the visitors it looks like now it's like sort of like an alien themed one let's see how this one is all right so not my favorite one yeah, it's not my favorite one. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't my favorite. We're about to go into Hiller House. So, like I said, I, I miss when they had the little card that shorter showed you which ones you've been in already, which ones you still need to do. I feel like that's kind of been, is a miss. But anyway, whatever, let's, let's see what this one's about. It's been a while, like I, this is like, again, one of my favorite ones, but it's been a while since I've been here and I'm actually really excited to be here, so. I will also definitely recommend consider getting one of these fast passes. I always hate having to pay for additional experiences when I've already paid for the original experience. I usually like to try and get my money's worth, you know, based on what I've already done. It's really saved us a lot of time. Like the lineups are very long tonight. We paid an additional what forty-five or so dollars each to get these fast passes, but I'm not gonna lie, it saved us a hell of a lot of time. I would recommend doing it. Like I hate to say because I don't like to pay additional for when I've already paid for the experience itself, but. It's, it has saved us a lot of time. If you are on a time constraint especially, do it. If you have time, you don't care to sit in line because of that, then it's not a big deal. But like, it has saved us a lot of time. I would definitely recommend it. All right, so again, not one of my favorites, but one thing I will say is that they do try to space you out. The problem is once you're in there, the people in front of you will often go a little bit slower than maybe you are. So it does kind of, you know, kill the mood a little bit, but they do try. So, you know, I'll give them credit for that. But uh, yeah, that definitely was not one of my favorite ones. The thing I will mention as well is that they do have like a few areas where you can get drinks and food and stuff. It's not just sort of like, you know one or two areas it, it seems like it's pretty spread out so like if you want to stop at, like halfway get a drink a snack things like that it is available sorry my friends keep leaving me and like i'm slower than everybody because i'm very injured I'm trying to find them all right so i got two drinks i got like a purple seltzer and a gin mule and a pretzel i came to about 34 dollars so not the cheapest but not the worst. I thought she said 50 something, it was like 30 something. Anyway, still not not the best, but it's alright. This thing is taking a beating. Carnival. This is like one of the last ones I think that we haven't done yet. This is the one where it's like I think clowns and whatnot. Let's see how it is. Oh I like this. I feel like at the weekend. <laughs> uh -uh, All right, so we did Carnival. Um, that one's a fun one, it's just too short. That's like my one complaint, it was too short. We had a laugh, we had a good time in there, but it just went by way too quickly. Um, now that we have the fast passes, we might do Haunted Hayride again, just because it was like one of our favorites. We made a friend over here. Oh, some more. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, so. They're all out tonight, apparently. 
Um, yeah, we are probably going to go to uh, the Haunted Hate Ride again just because we had to wait in a long line for that. But now we have the fast passes, we can hopefully get in and out fairly quick. So let's go see. My leg is really starting to give out, so I'm really tired. All right, so we went on the Haunted Hay Ride, which is like one of the first ones that you walk in. We went on it again. There's like no lineup now, whether it's because it's later in the night, whether it's because everybody sort of congregates at that one first and then does the rest of the park. I don't know. So recommendation, maybe try and go furthest into the park first and then kind of work your way back to the front because maybe you'll, you know, do better off. I don't know. Anyway, just thought. Fear Farm, you guys, I am so excited that I finally got to show Fear Farm on this channel. Like, this is easily one of my favorites, if not my favorite, of all the spooky season events that go on in the greater Toronto area. Now, I don't know if I'd really even want to consider this greater Toronto area, because it's pretty far from Toronto, but uh, anyway, such a great event. Let's get into it right now. So, I first went to Fear Farm in 2016, and it very quickly became an annual event for us. Uh, I went every year until I think the last year was 2019. We all know what happened after 2019 and then just haven't really had the chance to go back since. So this is, you know, the first time back in what, four years. So was really, really excited to be there. Now I will say it's busy. It's a very busy event. So, um, you know, first recommendation is going to be, you know, with any event that I, uh, you know, is seasonal like this is try to get there in one of the opening weekends or beginning weekends. Cause they do tend to be the less, like little less busy than they are closer to Halloween. For example, this is also predominantly, if not almost fully outdoor, right? So you definitely want to dress appropriately. I've got this hat on <laughs> because, uh, Cody was not dressed appropriately and neither were our friends, uh, Melissa and Nadine. So we had to actually visit the sort of gift shop and they had to purchase things to basically keep themselves more comfortable in the temperature because it was really cold. So uh, I think this house like 25 bucks. Their sweaters, I think were, you know, they both bought sweaters. So I think in total it came to like just over a hundred bucks for both sweaters. So not cheap. But I will say that their gift shop was really great. Like I ended up buying this <laughs> stupid thing. It's so cute. The legs like extend and stuff. I know I just thought it was really, really cute. So I had to get it. I mean, I was also drinking a little bit, so that probably helped. But I mean, he was only like 30 bucks too. So I don't even think it was that bad. But anyway, I just thought it was really, really cute. So I had to get him for Halloween decorations. Second recommendation, as I mentioned in the video, is check the temperature before you go places. Plan ahead, check the weather, check the temperature. And don't just look at your phone and say, oh, it's 20 degrees in Toronto right now. So no, it doesn't matter. Check where you're going. The actual, Put the address in if you have to, or check the city, you know, the exact area that you're going to be in. Put it in your weather app because your temperature could change dramatically. I'm talking even, you know, a few kilometers away. You could be, you know, crazy rain and, you know, it could be beautiful sunshine where you are or the the temperature for example could drop if you're closer to the lake for example you're going to find it to be a lot colder so double check the temperature of where you're going but also for the time that you're going because if you're checking the temperature now that doesn't really matter if you're not going to be going to the event for another four or five hours for example so double check the temperature dress weather appropriately wear layers if you have to worst case you have to take something off and carry it not the end of the world but dress weather appropriate also, this is a rain or shine event. So make sure if you you know need some sort of weather protection, you have it. Um, you are gonna be walking in cornfields. You're gonna be walking in muddy, dirty areas. Wear shoes that are appropriate. Don't wear heels, don't wear sandals, don't wear you know, flip-flops or things like that. Wear shoes that you're able to walk comfortably in and that you know if they do get a little bit dirty, a little bit muddy, you're not gonna be completely, completely upset about it. So just keep those couple things in mind. This event also starts at seven o'clock and runs till I believe midnight. So even that, I'll recommend get there at seven or even maybe slightly before seven and check in or whatever you have to do to make sure that you have enough time to do all of the events. I believe there are six haunts in total um, and you wanna make sure you have enough time to do it. It is busy, especially when we went, the lines were crazy. And for ones, for example, like the Haunted Hayride that there's only, I think maybe two or three of these sort of tractors coming around, taking people around. So you really do have to wait for the next one. So you are gonna be stuck waiting and uh, yeah, keep that in mind. This is also not a cheap event by all means. Our tickets each were over $70. I couldn't believe it. I know that they do have some sort of an opening, um, 
a, some sort of a deal in advance if you check. Like I believe they give you like 10% off or something like that if you purchase your tickets by a certain date in like September, for example. But this is not a cheap event. Especially when you see the lines and you see how long you're waiting. And I mean, some of these lines you're waiting for, I think we waited for well over half an hour, maybe even close to an hour to get on that haunted hayride until, and you know, we were all really cold. We thought, let's get fast passes, it's freezing. So on top of that over $70 each that we paid for those tickets, we bought these fast passes, which I believe were about $45. So, I mean, all in all, just to go out through these attractions costs us like well, well over $100. Or so what, like you're looking at probably close to like what 120 ish so not cheap by any stretch of the imagination so that is i would say one of the downfalls of this event is it is very expensive it also is somewhat far away if you are sort of like me residing in sort of the the toronto area if you're from you know a closer area it's not so bad but if you are from it coming from a distance like me it's a little bit tough uh you are sort of off the beaten path in like a very rural farm type area Fortunately for us, we have friends who live in Cambridge, so we were able to stay there and, you know, it was about a, maybe a 20 or so minute Uber ride from there. So that way we were able to have a couple drinks before we got there, etc. It is licensed as well. So if you do want to get drinks when you're there, make sure you have your ID with you. They will give you a wristband and that way you can, you know, get drinks from there. They have, you know, some snacks and everything, which is great. We got like pretzels with like cheese dip, but you can get, you know, all different kinds of things like that to snack on. I think they have like grilled cheeses, uh, popcorn, you know, stuff like that. Now it has been, I would say about four or so years since I have gone to this event. What a vast, I would say improvement than when I was used to going before. The downside being that it is so busy, but the, the plus side being that they really have step, stepped their game up tremendously. Um, I remember the first few years that we would go there, there was like one guy walking around with like, you know, devil sticks or whatever that he would toss up and whatnot. Now there's like sort of scare actors all over the place. It's not just in the actual sort of scare zones, but just walking around from, from each attraction to the other, just monsters and whatnot walking around there as well. There's a stage set up where they have music and different shows going on. There's, uh, yeah, just so much to see. Even the, I mean, stupid ex observation, but even the lineups and just seemed a lot more put well put together just in general they definitely definitely have stepped their game up tremendously and it shows and it's impressive now there are some that i would say i like more than others for example the haunted hayride's a lot of fun because you're sort of sitting on this trailer and you're hearing a story about the headless horseman and you're going through these different areas you're in like the cornfield it's really dark and really creepy and all of a sudden you pull up to like a town and these things jumping out and, and scaring you and uh, and then at the end, they actually have like a, a headless horseman running around, like actually on a horse, you know, with no head. Really, really cool. Really impressive. That one's definitely worth checking out. I also really love corn stalkers. I love being able to walk, you walk, you start off walking through this like school bus. It's really creepy. And then you're walking through like just basically a cornfield. Again, it's so dark. You can still see where you're going. Like you're still going to be able to see where you're going, but it's super dark. There's, you know, scare actors hiding in the, the corn and whatnot. It's really cool um i will say it happened again i was taking some footage i don't like to take too too much footage of these places like that because i i don't want to ruin it for you if you're you know planning on checking this event out i, I want you to you know enjoy it and to, you know experience it for yourself but a lot of it happens to me so often i was filming or at least i thought i was but i wasn't and then when i put the when i thought i turned off the camera and put it down i started actually filming then so Unfortunately, I did lose a lot of footage because of my own stupidity, but uh, yeah, so I didn't get to include all the things I would like to have included in there, but still that leaves more for, you know, you to be surprised about when you actually go yourself. Now there are ones that I would say, had I not got the fast pass, I probably would have been a little bit frustrated. For example, like there's like a, an alien one, I think that the line was pretty long for it. And um, it wasn't that great, in my opinion. Like it wasn't one of my favorites of the ones that are there. So we kind of just walked through and we're kind of like, meh. So, you know, had I waited in this like long line without the fast pass, I probably would have been not the happiest about it. Uh, Carnival, for example, it's like a very creepy, like ghosts and like you're at a circus, uh, no, sorry, not ghosts, clowns, like you're at a circus and this and that. Really well done, really cool, but really short. You're sort of in the fun house for what feels like minutes like very short very very short amount of time and that one again had a pretty long lineup fortunately we had the fast pass so as much as i would say it was a lot of money to get the fast pass i will say it probably was worth it in the end um 
it was a lot of money though. I mean, when you think, like I said, about 120, 130 bucks, still is a lot of money. But uh, I would say if, on nights like that, especially when it's cold, when it's yucky out, it probably was smarter just to get the fast pass. So that way you can kind of get through everything. Plus you get to go through everything multiple times. Like we went on the Haunted Hayride twice just because we really did enjoy it the first time. We thought, hey, we got the fast pass, let's just go through it. I will also mention that we went to the Haunted Hayride first because it was the first one that kind of came up as you walk into the park. Um, super long lineup. Now, towards the end of the night, there was like no lineup. So now I don't know if that's because people were just cold or people had already gone through everything. We were going home, it was getting time, you know, close to closing time. I'm not sure exactly, but I did find that it was a lot less busy then. So I don't know if it maybe pays to go through, go to sort of like the furthest end of the park first, go through some of those scare areas and then kind of work your way back to the front. Something to think about, maybe something to consider for the next time we go uh, to see if maybe that's a better way to do it. I don't know, something to think about anyway. As mentioned, they've got this great gift shop where you can buy all kinds of things. One thing I was a bit disappointed with, I will say, is that they kind of combined their bakery area with the gift shop. Now their bakery area used to have like tons and tons of treats and things that you could buy. I used to always walk out with so much stuff. This time around, I think I bought like a cookie, you know, so uh, they definitely seem to have scaled down the bakery aspect of it, but then the gift shop aspect has definitely been amped up. Like for example, the hat, the hoodies, my little, skeleton guy it definitely seems to have been amped up for sure um and i know i knocked the the merch a little bit the actual merch is is not that bad it's 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 cute it's well done i think it's just the fact that i know that you know none of us well besides you know in the making of this video i know none of us will probably ever wear this stuff again it was just you know for the sake of that you know night being so cold that's why i was sort of ragging on it a little bit but uh it actually isn't bad and if you are you know into that you know the fear farm sort of vibe or the farmtastic vibe it's it's definitely something to check out. Now I know they offer another uh, experience there for, it's, it's sort of an upgrade experience that I believe is sort of like a haunted like campsite type experience. I don't know too much about it, I've never done it before. I think it's new within the last few years they've started doing it. Uh, don't know too much about it as I said, but I know that there is another upgrade experience if you are interested to maybe look into that one as well. But is this spot right for you? I would say, hands down, if you are into spooky season, if you are into these types of, you know, scary sort of things like, um, you know, these haunted attractions and whatnot, I would say this is definitely a good one to check out. What I love about Fear Farm is it's very not a corporate type. I mean, this is not sh a, like Snyder's Farm. It's not, it's not Canada's Wonderland, for example. It's a farm. It feels very much like it's not a big corporate thing but in like the best way possible um you know everything feels very i don't want to say homemade but homemade to a certain extent like they've used you know an actual abandoned bus they've used an actual broken down cars as displays and things like that so i really like the the almost authentic feeling that that kind of offers by being on a farm being sort of in the middle of nowhere, etc. I think this is just a good time if you, you know, are into those types of scary experiences. You're with a group of friends, you know, if you're from maybe Toronto or the GTA or whatever, and you don't mind a bit of a drive, I think it's probably gonna take you, you know, from the core, maybe 45 minutes, an hour or so, depending on traffic, obviously. But I think it's definitely something that you can make sort of a fun night of it, you know, go for a little road trip. I know the first time we went there, we ended up at like Moose Winooski's or something for dinner or, you know, for drink, dinner and drinks, or I don't forget, forget if we went like before or after. But anyway, make like a, a little road trip or a night out of it. Um, if you're from the area or have friends in the area, even better, because that way you can, you know, hopefully crash at their place like we did, uh, made things a little bit easier. That way we could, you know, have a couple drinks, take an Uber, et cetera. So definitely made things a lot easier. But uh, all in all, I just think this is, in my opinion, one of the best spooky season events to go to in, you know, Ontario, I would say. Now, I really don't want to give away too much. I also don't want to ramble for too long because I actually want to still try and get this video out to you before Halloween. And I know I am, you know, kind of running out of time. I really did want to try and get this out to you sort of closer to the beginning of the spooky season. A, because it'd be a lot easier to go to these events when it's the beginning of spooky season because it's not as busy. B, because I want to give you guys enough time to plan your spooky season so that way you can, you know, book your events in advance and sort of plan what you want to go to. Because I know that you guys are like me and you like to Google, you know, different events that are going on, possibly check out YouTube to see if there's any reviews or sort of things that kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Uh, I noticed, for example, my I did a video last year on Castle Loma that you guys have really been watching a lot this, this year particularly. So thank you guys so much if you have checked that one out. Um, 
I know that I'm late to the game with this video. Unfortunately, spooky season is, you know, the window is so short. I feel like it kind of kicks off right at the end of September. And then, you know, obviously by the end of October, it's done. And we've been pretty much booked solid for, you know, probably since then actually. So it's been hard to kind of get to all of the events. I know there's ones I missed out on, for example. So, you know, if you have ideas of ones that you want me to check out maybe for next year, or, you know, I can try and try and squeeze them in for this year, but I really don't think it's gonna happen. I, I, I mean, even this coming weekend, I know I'm pretty much booked and then, you know, Halloween is pretty much here. So um, maybe something I consider for next year, for next year's spooky season. I know there's one called uh, Hexwood, for example, that we wanted to check out in Pickering, but I uh, didn't get a chance to. Heard mixed things, but you know, want to put my own kind of uh, opinion on it and review on it. So maybe we'll check that one out next year if it's still happening. Uh, there's one in Niagara Falls. It's like a, it's like a haunted hayride or something like that that I wanted to check out as well, which again didn't get a chance to. And I know there's some other ones around that uh, I haven't been to yet, but you know, I tend to like to visit the old favorites and then try to sort of find a new one sort of in the mix of that. Uh, this year I've sort of attended mainly old favorites, which uh, don't get me wrong, we have enjoyed. So I've been really happy to do it. Um, but if you do have any other ideas of other ones that maybe you haven't seen on my channel or any other one's channel yet, and you, know, you think it'd be good for, you know, promote it, get it out there, or even just because you want to see for yourself before you attend it, leave in the comments below because it, it does actually, you know, help me for, for future videos. If you have any questions, if I've missed anything about this particular event, Again, please don't hesitate to leave any comments below. It's really helpful for other travelers because they may have the same questions that you have. It's helpful for me because then I can think, you know, what do I want to include in future videos? It also helps with the YouTube algorithm. Like any interaction you guys have with my videos, whether you comment, like, share, subscribe, really helps me out. Um, also, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Uh, it's totally free for you. There's a button like right there, completely free for you really helps me keep delivering this free content to you. So I'd really, really appreciate it. Once again, this is Daniel Spotlight. Happy spooky season. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.